All right, students, this is ARD, your accounting coach. Today, we are going to discuss the basics of accounting from accounting cycle. Now, what does an accounting cycle mean? Accounting cycle is the process of accounting in any business. This accounting cycle starts with transaction. Then, after transaction, now what does transaction mean? We'll be discussing in near future. Let's see the component first. Then after a transaction, we are moved forward to generating a source document, also known as documentary record. Then from source document, we will move to books of original entry, also known as books of prime entry. Then we'll be made, making ledgers that are books containing T accounts. Then finally, in the cycle, we have trial balance. And then from the trial balance, we are able to make financial statements that are income statement and balance sheet then the process starts again so this is an accounting cycle we'll be starting with the term transaction now what is mm, transaction means transaction means in any business whenever we buy something is a transaction whenever we are selling some things to someone else uh, our customers it is also known as transaction whenever customer are, is paying us or we are paying to a supplier whenever we are returning goods to a supplier or our supplier our customers are returning goods to us means any commercial event in the business taking place is known as a transaction so any activity in the business which is of commercial nature, buying something, selling something, or uh, uh, returning goods back or giving goods back to supplier. These are all, all known as transactions. So after transaction, we'll be moving forward to source document. Now, what does source document mean? Source document, also known as documentary record, is the proof of any business transaction. Means if I'm telling you that I've sold goods uh, worth uh, ten thousand dollars you may ask the question what is the proof what is the evidence how can i believe you that you have sold such many amount of goods so the proof or document that i'll be making is known as source document also known as documentary records so documentary records are a proof or evidence of a transaction that has been taken place in a business so uh, what i've done uh, i have divided the business transactions into some common types and for every transaction we'll be dis discussing a source document first transaction is sale of goods or services on credit see whenever we are selling goods to our customers on credit the document is known as sales invoice so sales invoice is issued by a seller if i'm selling goods i'll be issuing sales invoice to my customers so sales invoice are only used whenever we are selling goods on credit not on cash terms so then next one is purchase of goods as service on credit whenever we are buying goods on credit the document will be purchase invoice so my dear students an invoice is the same if i'm selling goods to my customers I will be naming that invoice as a sales invoice and for my customer it is known as a purchase invoice. So seller names the invoice as a sales invoice and for the buyer the same invoice is known as purchase invoice. Again invoice is only used in credit transaction not cash transaction. Whenever we are selling or buying goods in cash the document is known as a receipt. So you can also write sale receipt or purchase receipt, but in CI syllabus, the examiner not specifically uses the word, uh, the term sales receipt or purchase receipt. We only use the term receipt both for purchase or sale of goods on cash. So whenever we are buying or selling goods on cash, the document is received. You may remember that whenever you go to KFC or McDonald's or Pizza Hut or maybe some supermarket grocery store, whenever you buy goods on cash, uh, the, uh, the supplier, uh, the burger joint give you a small white slip. This is known as a receipt. Then after receipt, move forward to return goods by customer. Whenever customer is returning goods to us, we will be issuing the customer credit note see this is a bit tricky and important there are two types of note one is debit note and another one is credit note so whenever customer is returning goods to us the customer will be giving us debit note but debit note is of no value 
until and unless we issue our customer a credit note so customer gives a debit note which have no value unless we gives back the credit note so always the transaction ends on a credit notes therefore we do not write debit note in an exam we always write credit note we can write a debit note in an exam when when the question specifically ask the examiner specifically ask us that uh, kindly name the transaction kindly name the document that may be given by that may be issued by customer so if he is specifically asking for the document issued uh, by customer we will be writing a debit note uh, but if the examiner does not mentions the customer the examiner just mentions the transaction that is sale return or return inward we always write credit note then again we have returned goods now we are returning goods to supplier now why are we returning goods back to the supplier maybe for the same reasons the good is uh, also not of specific quality or maybe not as promised by the supplier therefore we uh, not as advertised by the supplier now we are returning goods back to supplier for whatsoever reason whenever we are returning goods to a supplier we will be issuing debit note again the debit note is of no value unless the supplier in return gives us credit note so again we will be writing credit note in both now the uh, own, in both of the transaction whether it is sale return return inward or purchase return return outward we are writing credit note now what is the difference between these two credit notes the difference is this uh, this credit note we are issuing it to our customers they are issued to our customers and this credit note we are receiving it from our supplier so whenever our customer return goods back to us that is sale return or return inward we will be issuing credit note to our customers and whenever we are returning goods to our suppliers our supplier is uh, giving us the credit note so in both the cases customer gives debit note and th th that has no importance at all and the supplier gives credit note when we are supplier we will be giving credit note to our customers and when we are returning goods to our supplier our supplier will be giving credit note to us so in both the cases we will be writing credit note one is issued to customers for sale return and one is received from supplier that is purchase return then we have recording of payment of wages or salary whenever we are paying wages to our staff or salaries to our administrative staff wages are normally weekly or daily basis uh, to factory workers and the staff uh, um, the administrative staff are paid monthly salary uh, this is known as salary so whenever we are paying or recording wages or salary the document which we will be using in exam is pay slip or wage sheet so there's there a bit different pay slip is made for every employee different pay slip is made for every employee pay slip uh, shows the calculation that this was your gross pay and these were the deductions made by employer maybe the taxes or uh, social security payments and the final amount that you will be getting for home that is pay slip and wage sheet is made uh, uh, combined slip made for all of the employees that is or department maybe it is a wage sheet so these are both source document then we are paying to supplier or any other expense by check whenever we are paying our supplier or for rent or for insurance through check we'll be using the document that is check counterfoil now what is the check counterfoil you may have seen the checkbook maybe yours or maybe your father's or mother's checkbook so when we issue a check when we uh, tear a check apart the uh, one of the uh, part of the check remains in the checkbook the part that remains with us is known as check counterfoil so check counterfoil basically is a record uh, kept by us so as to remember that we have made such and such payment to our suppliers and to update our records so this is check counterfoil it is an evidence that we have paid supplier some sort of checks send summary of transaction to customer uh, see at the end of the month you may remember that all our uh, maybe domestic suppliers such as we are uh, drinking mineral water so mineral water guy comes at the end of the month and give us a slip or maybe the milk shop gives us the slip at the end of the month the newspaper guy or the meat shop grocery shop 
the corner shop gives us some uh, reminder at the end of the month this reminder is known as statement of account so we as a supplier sent uh, send statements to all of our customers at the end of the month as a reminder so that you uh, owe us this much uh, this much amount of money this is known as statement of account then summary of transactions uh, received from bank uh, see, uh, as we are customers of the bank, bank also gives us a statement which is known as bank statement. So bank statement is also a statement uh, for reminder that uh, we have done so many transactions with the bank and this was the opening balance and these were the withdrawals and deposits and finally we have this month amount left in our bank account. Then finally we have sale purchase of non-current assurance credit whenever we are buying or selling non-current assurance credit means whenever we are buying a computer or maybe furniture or a motor vehicle or we are selling our old uh, office equipment or uh, motor car so we'll be using the document that is invoice. So we previously we used to write sales invoice or purchase invoice and now we are writing only invoice. Why? Sales invoice is only used when we are selling goods or stock or inventory. Goods, stock or inventory means these are the goods that we intend to sell. These is, this is the main business for us for selling these goods means if there is a shoe shop that is Bata, uh, the shoes are inventory for Bata. And if we, this is a boutique or uh, maybe designer outfits shop, so all of the clothing that is being hanged in the store, this is inventory. And if we have a motor showroom, automobile showroom, the automobiles then become the inventory. Whenever we are selling inventory, we'll be issuing sales invoice or getting purchase invoice. And when we are selling uh, assets, for our own use then we'll be using an invoice so i hope students you are able to understand uh, some basics of accounting cycle we'll be discussing parts of accounting cycle in the near future we just studied transactions today and source documents today in the next upcoming video you may find books of original entry and then ledgers and for other stuff if you like the video kindly subscribe the channel and share this video with our other accounting students thank you